Family for Christmas is a foster care remember short story from Maggie Hartley. This was released originally in 2016. I first read it in 2019 and I decided to reread it again just now and I couldn't remember exactly what happened and I have to say it was really moving. This is about a little boy called Edward, a one-year-old boy who experiences a horrific accident. I don't want to tell you what it is because I don't want to give it away but he he experiences this horrendous accident and he's he's defied all odds and he's actually pulled through but he's severely brain damaged and his parents are struggling to come to terms with this particularly because Edward is actually a twin and obviously when they look at one twin and they see what Edward used to be like basically it's very difficult for them so they've asked almost, if Edward can go into foster care to at least allow them some time to work out how they're going to approach this and what they can do because they don't know if they even want to look after him because they don't believe they can at this stage. So they ask for Edward to go into foster care and, of course, that's where Maggie comes in and Maggie agrees to look after him while the parents try and work out what on earth they want from this situation because obviously they're just in bits their world's been torn apart and they don't know if they can provide him with the care that he needs and Maggie agrees to look after Edward for an indefinite period of time but really it's kind of implied that they're giving the family until Christmas and then they're going to try and you know, prompt some kind of response if the family haven't said anything by then or if they've not been able to move anything forward, which I think is a period of about four months, give or take. I think it might have been the end of August, beginning of September when this story started. And because the parents are putting Edward in care voluntarily, they have complete access to their son. Of course they do. And a lot of this is about Maggie caring for the child, but also the parents visiting Maggie every single day and spending time with Edward. But even though they're visiting him every day, they're not necessarily hands-on with his care, particularly the mother uh, who blames herself, um, Sheila. She blames herself for what happened and for quite a while, she doesn't even touch Edward. She, you know, willingly goes to Maggie's house to see her son, but she can't bring herself to make physical contact with him, partly because, well, presumably partly because she's scared of hurting him, and also because there's this part of her that thinks it's not the same son. And a lot of this, uh, as Sheila opens up, is that she's worried she'll never learn to love him the way she did. Because obviously when she's looking uh, at this little boy, it's not the boy she knew just days and weeks before this. And she has to learn to love him for who he now is. And it's it's a really emotional story. And it's really unclear for a lot of this, whether Edward will end up going into care, whether his parents will... Um, but whether he'll end up being, you know, going into a long-term foster care with a, a thought of going into adoption. Um, obviously, it's not just a case of deciding adoption. Day two, the child's adopted. There's a much longer process. It's not clear if he's going to start going down that route or if his parents will decide that they actually can meet his needs. And it's 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 emotional. It really is. And it goes to show that one accident, one snap decision can change can change an entire world, can change a family's life as they know it. And it's 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 eye opening, it's informative. And if this story can stop this from happening to even just one more child, if it can make a parent think and rethink that split decision, that split second decision that's a pretty powerful thing. Obviously, I've not told you what the accident is, so that might not make too much sense. But when you read it, you'll know exactly what I mean. It is emotional. It is moving. It is a short story. And I'm, normally, I prefer the, you know, the longer, full-length foster care memoirs. But this one, in terms of what needed to be told to tell the story, it was the perfect length. It never felt rushed. I didn't feel like we were missing out on anything. I will say it's not festive, which seems like a really stupid thing to say. But because it's got Christmas in the title... It's something that one might gravitate towards if they're looking for a Christmas-based story. But actually, there's there are a few Christmas things here and there, but not too much. So that's just worth bearing in mind. If you're looking for Christmas-themed recommendations, this isn't one of them. But that's irrelevant to the quality of the story. It's beautifully told. It's educational. 
it's inspiring. It's it's moving. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's something you can read in one sitting. It's it's an emotional journey, and as I said, it's quite unpredictable. I genuinely didn't know, you know, the direction this would ultimately take, uh, and I and I really enjoyed reading it for all of the right reasons.